the lecture. It's been a busy week of lectures. We had a lecture at uh, 1 o'clock today. We had one on Tuesday. We don't normally have them on Thursday, but uh, we have a very special guest. Uh, some of you may know him already. I think uh, you, took, you were on the Taipei the travel studio last year. say a few things about the lecture. Uh, so today Seng is a professor of architecture uh, at the National Chaotong University. He's also the dean of the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. No. Close yeah. enough? Yeah. yeah. Very good. <laughs> America, so it's a bigger, it's a, it's a, it's a quite a large college. Uh, and the School of Architecture sits within that college. Um, he was educated at a fashion degree at, at Harvard, uh, and um, he has had an office called City Crafts that he started some years ago, and continues, won many, many prizes in Taiwan, uh, particularly for residential, uh, for houses. I don't think he's going to show any of that tonight. He's going to talk about something else. Um, uh, he is a great friend of our schools. Uh, he's also a very good friend of mine. Um, and he's had a very distinguished career in Taiwan uh, at many schools, at all of the best schools. He's been dean or director at almost everything there. Um, uh, he also has served, among other things, as principal advisor uh, for urban design and architecture for the mayors in uh, Taichung uh, and in Taipei, um, and uh, has been extremely influential in everything related to architecture in, in Taiwan. He's, he's a really remarkable, remarkable person and a remarkable figure. Um, he also, this last year, led uh, the uh, NCTU team um, for the European Solar Decathlon competition, and they won the urban design uh, part of that, and I think they placed third overall, or fourth? Innovation. In yeah, in innovation. Did very well first time they did it. Uh, it's called the Iris? No. Orchid. Orchid. Orchid House. Uh, Correct. Flower. It's a flower. I don't know many flowers. Uh, it's, more than, uh, it's, a, it's, it's an incredible, I don't know if he's going to talk about that. You can see some of this if you look at some of the links online. Um, but I think what he's going to, and in fact I know what he's going to talk about tonight is the really outstanding series of competitions, international architecture competitions that have occurred um, in Taiwan over the last dozen or so years. As China started to open up, I think many people started to focus entirely on what was happening in China. And of course, we know so many amazing buildings have been built in China so quickly, uh, it's, it's kind of mind-boggling. At the same time, I, uh, I think we, many people lost um, focus on what was happening in Taiwan, and they have been running uh, really some of the most amazing competitions, I think, anywhere in the, in the world today. Um, uh, and David's going to talk about some of those competitions, some of those winners, about the competition culture, um, and uh, some of those buildings will be continued right now. Um, and David was instrumental in almost all of those, I would say, in one way or the other, in all of those. Sometimes as a juror, sometimes organizing um, uh, invitations for outside jurors. Aaron Betsky lectured here on Tuesday. I think he complained that he did not win a competition in Taiwan recently. I did not win Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Aaron normally is a juror on the other side of the competition. He's usually the nasty guy. This time he had to present and he lost. So now he knows how it feels. <laughs> um, uh, you weren't on that jury, were you? I was. Okay. Uh, there's no conflict this week over competition. But uh, Aaron has been on a couple of juries there. Absolutely. Yeah. 
uh, and I've been on a couple uh, there. Anyway, it's a it's a it's a it's an amazing kind of competition culture. It's also an amazing architecture culture. Many 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 people in the in that culture know each other. It's a very small tight knit good world. Uh, some terrific schools, some great architects, uh, and as I said, an incredible competition culture. Um, I'm not going to say anything more except uh, I'm very very happy that David uh, is here. Um, and I will ask you to join me in welcoming Dean David Sang. Thank you, Dean Michael Speaks, and um, thank you all for coming. It's very cold for me. Um, I have never been in uh, such uh, weather for 25 years after I left Boston, so that's quite a long time ago. Um, it, tonight I'm going to talk about competitions and straight, very, very straightforward. Um, so I'm going to present in three segments. Uh, the first uh, will be three projects that has uh, finally uh, realizing and, and almost uh, would have its uh, inaugurement, um, inaugurations uh, next year or the following years. And the second part, I, was, I am going to talk about uh, some very straightforward observations and third, uh, some afterthoughts of, of running uh, competitions uh, in Taiwan for uh, 12 years. Um, so let's all start. I have so many slides that I will fly by very quickly and if there's something that you really want me to stop and talk about it, uh, please wave your hand. I'll stop. I have too many slides. Otherwise, I'll keep you here till 12 o'clock. Okay. So um, a few weeks ago, if you're on website, you will see this. Um, wallpaper runs in uh, a feature on uh, Taiwan, uh, it, what's coming up there. Uh, different architects has, uh, is working there, um, various projects. Our good friend, Jesse, has just been here. Um, and then, of course, uh, uh, Oma and Rem Kohas. And I thought that, uh, you know, coming here, I could escape it a little bit and, and watch movie and do whatever. And I got on the airplane, and here it is again. Um, <laughs> And uh, it's about uh, best building sites. So building and sites. Um, we're going to talk about building and the city. That's what we're going to talk about uh, tonight. And I'll show you a little clip. You can hear it very well, but... This was in the uh, Gallery Ma exhibition, a little clip, and I put these uh, two gentlemen together on that day. And uh, I love this uh, slide because uh, uh, Rain said to all his OMA staff, said, quick, take a shot. Um, uh, Yi Chun-sang has now become the newest OMA intern. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they visit each other's building on that day. Uh, sometimes uh, four, week, uh, four months ago. So I'm going to start to talk about what happened and how this all come to be. Uh, this is the school I used to teach. I was a dean there for art and design school. I am Pei designed the, uh, the campus, and this is what it, was look, what it looked like. Um, as you can see, um, there's nothing between the campus and the mountain. Um, I used to live somewhere here a long time ago when I was small. I can see the whole campus and the chapel. And then gradually the city comes in and this is what it was like um, when they start, we start running competitions. And I show this because I want you to know that architecture uh, is very, very valuable, uh, not only for uh, uh, politicians, but also for developers. And, and pay attention to uh, what comes up uh, 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 surrounding these buildings. So uh, we're going to talk about first building, and of course a lot of people would recognize this. This is Metropolitan uh, uh, Opera House in Taiwan. It's called National uh, uh, Concert Hall. And uh, this is uh, what he showed when he entered the competition, and I'm going to show that for three minutes. And there's no sound. Is 
No, no, there's no sound. There's no sound. Don't worry. Yeah. But it's not chill. Okay. It's coming. It's pretty close to what uh, what's, uh, what what we what they built uh, over there now. Very close, you will see it. Yeah, this is competition video, trade wall, and the two systems. It's a two-stage competition in Taiwan used to be two stage. The one that Aaron lost is one stage. That's why when I run it, I tend to run two stage. But it's really exhausting for two in, uh, uh, doing two stage competition. If you pay close attention, there are actually two systems intertwined at the same time, all together. So rather than uh, calling rows uh, or Peter Eisenman's A, B, A, B, B, it's actually coexist, A and B, same times together. And that's something that uh, Yitu san uh, wanted to experiment after he did Sendai Media Tech um, so that's uh, he, what he came up with. And that's the uh, A and B system uh, using algorithm uh, to twist it around. And that's uh, eventually what gets built, the built version of it, slightly different from the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the animations you saw. And I showed this uh, because you will be able to see that the so-called A, B system uh, coexist better than the, uh, the daylight version. So uh, here it is. Uh, this is uh, what uh, became uh, the crown, of what we call the uh, rezoning area of the seventh uh, urban uh, planning um, area. So uh, one of the most important concepts is not only these two systems coexist, but inside and outside uh, flow coming in and out um, so the square in itself is just a conceptual square uh, that cuts um, the, um, the endless uh, extension of uh, organ uh, that uh, extended uh, towards the city. And the whole concept actually came from the arcade in Taiwan because we have lots of snow and it's uh, 
lots of rain, I'm sorry. <laughs> lots of rain and it's very hot and humid. Uh, therefore, uh, we walked under arcade along the street. Uh, we don't have street wall. Rather than street wall, we have an arcade. And uh, he extended this arcade and then uh, turned it into a um, uh, organization um, tool. tool. So these are uh, what became of it, and, and with this red uh, wall, it implicates that the, to where two system meets, and uh, I think you want to see this. This is a very uh, shocking shot for me when I took Dean uh, speaks over there, um, and everybody uh, from uh, Taiwan studio last year, I think the, everybody were overwhelmed by how these uh, two systems come together and how difficult uh, the construction uh, method is. And the space uh, just keep flowing around um, towards uh, everywhere and finally uh, goes up to the rooftop. And it's interesting, I want to pause a little bit here, um, that uh, at one point, everybody thought that inside of one system, it just looked really, really nice. Uh, 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 rather than filling the roof up, um, uh, which being designed and conceptually uh, would be uh, pure, um, it has to build up. Uh, but everybody argued to Ito-san that uh, they would prefer to, uh, to have it open up. And Ito-san thought for about one month and then he then decided that he wanted to keep the uh, uh, purity in the uh, concept, so he uh, filled it in. So it became something like this. And then the garden, and you couldn't, wouldn't be able to look down from there, but for him, it's important to keep that uh, purity of the uh, concept. There are three theater uh, from 2014 seats of the Grand Theater. It was 2008, but of course, it will become 2016. <laughs> yeah, you get the joke. Yeah, politicians make him add, keep adding because uh, it took so long to build it. And there's a playhouse and a little uh, uh, black box. So uh, this is what's uh, inside the Grand Theater, and this is what's uh, inside the playhouse, the 800 seats, the model of it, and uh, the uh, rendering, and finally, a real model, and then finally the construction um, of the uh, of 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 of, uh, of the playhouse. It's amazing because every single um, formworks and um, it's different. You have to calculate it uh, beforehand to hold the uh, formwork, the scaffolding. I mean. It has to be very different. You have to be very careful, and some of them are really, really tall, really high, be, uh, because it's theater and all that. So uh, that's uh, the playhouse. The rooftop um, amphitheater uh, eventually became a, what they call a green hall, because uh, on that on one hand, uh, Ito san thought that it would make more sense to connect it with the ground, and on the other hand, the service uh, served better. Uh, connecting back uh, to the uh, the other um, back of house, so this is uh, uh, eventually uh, what uh, what came what will be in the top, and we did a, a model uh, to study how these two systems coexist with each other. It's amazing uh, free section as they would call it, um, rather than free plan. And there's an animation, if you bear with me, um, I don't have much uh, animation left, but if you bear with me, it's a two minute um, video. It's also silent. The algorithm keep changing.
when we picked this project, not only because it has the smallest footprint, but also it asked the question, what's an opera house in 21st century? We want to move forward from uh, 19th century uh, Garnier's Paris <coughs> opera house where you know, it's a, it's a uh, noble man and woman, a social place for them. We want to move forward. Uh, we want to make, uh, or rather, we want to pick a project that sort of uh, contains and, and uh, every kinds of uh, uh, opera, include Taiwanese and Chinese, of course. So uh, Yi Zhu-san suggested that uh, street music and street musician is something he likes, so he took the uh, typology or rather prototype of arcade and push it forward. Our Arab Cecil Bowman uh, did the structural uh, analysis and Taiwanese uh, office uh, and Taiwanese office did the parametrics of calculating uh, the curves. So uh, that's uh, eventually uh, what became of the uh, opera house. And of course, we picked it because it makes a lot of sense. Uh, little did we know that uh, construction would be so difficult. Um, they experiment a lot with, uh, you know, rhinos uh, calculating everything, all kinds of softwares, and Ito-san oversees the first mock-ups, which became this, and they're keeping the mock-ups now. So I'm very quickly, uh, I'm going to go through uh, the uh, construction uh, periods where it goes up. And you can see how these two systems intertwine with each other. And the flight tower, of course, uh, that uh, goes up. They have a soft inauguration uh, last October. Um, they, it's now closed to, uh, for further uh, furnish of the interior. and. Uh, and yet uh, it was already uh, attracting every day, not only weekend, attracting uh, kids and uh, adults to visit it and look at it from outside. They even have uh, launched a uh, first play uh, to test how these uh, um, the theater works. And uh, people wanted more, so they had uh, two extra uh, uh, replay of the drama which is a, a Taiwanese drama, as a matter of fact. And uh, they are um, amazing. Uh, it, it, the space itself uh, impressed a lot of people. So um, again, um, you are uh, watching uh, these two systems with supporting back of house being colored in a uh, hanging, uh, overhanging stairs that comes up. Um, it's. Uh, pretty much uh, from the exterior, pretty much closed. There are, of course, a lot of discussions of uh, the facade being very, very flat. And for a lot of people, it's not modern enough because uh, some people will say, hey, this is very decorative. But I would argue that the gray being gray, neutral, is only conceptual. The area that uh, it demanded by uh, the jurors and the city government, uh, the client, stopped it right there. So he used a gray, and he make it, uh, um, how do you say that, almost uh, non-material-like. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's why, for me, it makes sense uh, to keep it just like that. And now you can see that uh, during those eight years, the uh, real estate market tripled because of this, uh, this building. And they anxiously await uh, its inauguration. Um, the, the experience inside is really amazing as it goes up. Um, very religious sometimes. And this is the, the hole that eventually got uh, filled up. But at one point, uh, again, everybody thought that it, it looks really nice. Itu-san uh, think this would be, this, he did this before he won, he won Pritzker. And he's determined uh, to make this happen. And not only him, the whole office of Itu's office moved uh, uh, to uh, Taichung. And a lot of uh, Taiwanese architects and contractors joined him 
uh, try to realize uh, the dream, not only his, but uh, for, for them to achieve something that has never been done before. Unlike Bill Bao, it's actually internally uh, has a concept of two systems uh, that uh, coexist with each other, uh, sort of Asian or Oriental uh, thoughts. So the inside and outside uh, come together. That's what uh, Yi Tsang always want, keep flowing uh, without any you know, stopping by the, uh, in, by the uh, skin, so to speak. So these are the shots of uh, what it's uh, like almost now. And uh, they're putting uh, grass on the uh, rooftop. And then there will be uh, Michael Lin uh, doing uh, the public uh, art. Uh, in in scientific uh, Chinese brush painting on the wall, and again on that day, uh, Rain came to visit and uh, talk about um, the uh, admiration he has for uh, Ito's project, and uh, so that's uh, something that uh, get built uh, in Taichung. Uh, when Ito won the competition, uh, Rain was uh, actually uh, wa working on the other competition, which I also organized in Xilin and Taipei. Very different from uh, Ito's. Should we say that Ito's project is uh, conceptually autonomous or autonomously uh, conceptual? Um, this project actually has a lot to do with its context. Um, Raim wanted to do it because he wanted to build a uh, performing art center in, uh, in the past, it was called High Art, on top of a uh, night market. And when he visited the night market with Chris, Chris was here last year, um, last spring, when he uh, visited the uh, night market with his uh, local architect, Chris, he noticed that uh, the hot pot uh, you know, share together uh, in, the, in the same walk, cook all in one. And he liked that idea uh, since at the same time he was uh, asked to design, to have three uh, programs uh, within these, uh, within uh, the, uh, the Performing Arts Center. But he also wanted to use that as three in one. According to him, it's also an analogy because in Taiwan, it's really complicated. We have what we call Aborigines. Aborigines are uh, pretty much like uh, Polynesian. And then we have the so-called early settler who, who came uh, from China uh, more than 400 years ago. And then we have late settler who came with uh, General Chiang Kai-shek uh, in 1949. So we have all these different people uh, together on this island, and he wanted to make an analogy of this uh, since we had to call him such a turbulent history in the past 120 years. And this has become uh, the uh, tea pack. And of course, he earned a nickname of uh, stinky tofu uh, with a thousand year eggs instantly, which uh, some of the OMA member was not very happy. And uh, but people keep calling it because they say, look, there's even two chopsticks there. <laughs> so um, yeah, I don't know why they didn't get rid of it, but uh, that's it's right there because earthquake. So uh, it uh, it sits in a very prominent uh, site right across uh, from uh, MRT metro uh, station, and it also is the uh, gateway or threshold into the night market. So he wanted to have an open uh, uh, f uh, ground, f first floor, in the future. At that time, he wanted to have the, uh, the, the vendors come back right in. But uh, eventually, the vendors will be gone because they have since been relocated. But other kinds of vendors, uh, sells arts and crafts, will eventually be here. And of course, uh, something that he always liked with escalator, have a, uh, a visitor's loop that goes around uh, to the back uh, stage, um, sort of like uh, um, uh, realizing that uh, uh, the, again, the uh, 
theater is only a play, and, and on the other hand, our new year self, the life itself, is a, is a fiction, um, is a sort of like a play itself, sort of a, a knowledge of what uh, Zhang Chou uh, uh, story is about. Are you uh, sure you're, you're not a butterfly, or the butterfly become a person, something like that. So in this circulation, you will be able to uh, go through here, and we'll be able to see in the proscenium uh, theater of uh, what's inside without uh, uh, buying the ticket, uh, wandering around. Uh, it's just like you do that in the night market. So this is uh, that uh, inside that uh, uh, thousand year eggs, that huge ball um, there in a uh, very surreal uh, kind of uh, uh, space uh, became circulation. And the Grand Theater itself can connect it uh, with the uh, Persinian uh, Theater uh, to become one. Uh, I'm sorry, with Playhouse to become one. So, uh, and again, uh, it will open up uh, to, the, uh, to the landscape. And two of them, when connect together, become a super theater, uh, which is very challenging for acoustic engineers. Uh, but I was assured uh, that it would work. So, uh, <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, within uh, a year and a half, we'll see whether that really works. Um, but then again, uh, the engineer, acoustic engineer, said that they do they do that in Las Vegas all the time. So we're looking forward to. Uh, that uh, very soon. And again, just like Casa de Musica, uh, for Rain, there's uh, uh, all kinds of uh, performance are welcomed here, uh, not just the traditional one. So that's uh, the public loop, as I said, uh, that goes around and, and, and we go up to the uh, top of the uh, roof without uh, buying the tickets. Um, be able to know, uh, or when you have a uh, uh, Break in between uh, the, the, uh, the the act. You'll be able to uh, between the scene. You'll be able to go out and enjoy uh, the uh, the reality, the other scene. So that's uh, what uh, he was trying to do. And this again is public uh, loop. Finally, goes up to the top. And you see the uh, Yuan Shan and the, uh, yep, you're able to see the night market and the MRT station uh, from everywhere. So this is the um, TPAC, Taipei Performing Arts Center, which uh, uh, should be inaugurated in, again, in a year and a half. And this is what it looks like now. I think they took this not too long ago, and this is what uh, published, what got published on the uh, wallpaper. You have just witnessed uh, one of the projects in Taipei, which is Taipei Performing Arts Center, and the other is in the middle of tai Taiwan, it's uh, Taichung. Uh, uh, Metropolitan Opera House, and there's one down in South. I'll go very fast with this one. It's Mackinac's Wei Wu Ying Concert Hall. Wei Wu Ying actually was a military camp. This is what it was, look, uh, what it looks like, and uh, they are now building a concert hall again right here, in the backdrop of the harbor uh, with the. Uh, Tower 86, as they called it. Uh, Kaohsiung is a heavy industrial town uh, building ships. And at the same time on the site, it says Banyan Trees because it's a military camp that has been there so, so long. So the concept, the whole idea is to have uh, sort of a material interpretation 
of what uh, Bangyang uh, tree underneath the, uh, the crown is like using steel. So this is, uh, became uh, their concept uh, for the proposal, uh, which looked like this, and then eventually uh, transformed into void space in between. And uh, the rendering and the construction. It's a single floor, still construction, rather than uh, what Ito proposed, uh, concrete buildings. So this uh, is what inside. And what eventually would probably look like for the lobby. And this video was shot, uh, let's see. This. I lost the connections. Uh, oh, actually here. Video was shot less than a month ago when they put the last panel up. So they closed it up. And again, uh, we are awaiting um, its completion uh, within about two years or so. And uh, this is, uh, um, again, uh, Magno's uh, uh, Wei Wu Ying for performing arts. That's pretty much uh, uh, gives you an idea of what's happening um, over there, right there in Taiwan. But I wanted to go back a little bit to, to illustrate how it came about. Actually, there was an opera house proposed by Jean Nouvel. Again, this was before he won Pritzker. And because uh, the project did not go forward, I'll give you a little details of that, but the project did not go forward. Therefore, we held the Metropolitan Opera House competition of which ito uh, won. But this became the third prize, uh, Klaus and Kang, uh, the Dutch uh, duo uh, proposal. Uh, we like it, I like it a lot. Uh, but then again, it's because of the glass uh, curtain wall, people argue that it would be too hot. So he lost, uh, t uh, they lost to that, to that. And then this is uh, Zaha's proposal, a bit like a, a Guangzhou Opera House. Uh, but uh, in a different kind of a setting. And until this day, you can still see uh, on their website of this project. This project, for uh, I was told by, uh, by her office, this project somehow uh, means a lot to her as well. Uh, one of her biggest projects uh, and, and somehow didn't get built. Uh, it was proposed in 2003 and penned it uh, for one year. The Guggenheim Taichung project uh, became something that everybody noticed and uh, uh, within uh, a few days of its, uh, its uh, announcement. And of course, since that one was not built, uh, he pro she, I'm sorry, she proposed something uh, quite similar, uh, if you will. This is Abu Dhabi. So uh, if you don't succeed for the first time, you do it. Yeah, that's me right up there, um, much, much younger uh, with the uh, um, I'm city architect. So uh, this, this is what happened with the Guggenheim project. Uh, the mayor, Jean Nouvel, Gary, and uh, the director of uh, Guggenheim uh, Foundation at that time, Tom Crane. It came uh, and about 12 years ago, and because uh, that project did not go forward, uh, therefore uh, we helped uh, other competitions, uh, and again, which uh, Ito San won. But the competition started with the, uh, in Taichung City about 20 years ago with the City Hall, a Basel team, uh, not uh, Jacques Herzog, but another one, some, some other one, uh, won the competition. And that tradition has been going 
on for almost 20 years now. The, one of the most recent instruments is uh, Sejima's uh, Cultural Center and Library. And uh, so it, for some reason that uh, Japanese has been winning all these Taichung competitions. And, uh, and therefore, other cities are doing it. And this is Kinmen, a uh, ferry terminal. Uh, Isagami uh, won it. Uh, Juno Isagami uh, won it, and which uh, uh, will be built to connect a ferry to mainland China very soon. Uh, one of the other recent one is uh, Shigeru Fang's uh, uh, art museum in Tainan, and uh, this has caused some controversy recently uh, because uh, people have been saying that it's really uh, too big for the environment. But then again, uh, I use this example to say that sometimes it's, re it's really not uh, uh, the architect's fault. I'm not saying this for Shigeru, but because the, uh, they're too uh, greedy, uh, too ambitious, and without doing the uh, feasibility study, uh, come up with the right numbers. And, and again, I just wanted to say that when you join in the future, or you to join these kind of competition, be a little bit careful because again, uh, a lot of time uh, it's uh, something to do with uh, uh, politicians who wanted to uh, impress um, people. So the so-called conceptual competition for sure. And sometimes they really do give out uh, humongous programs, but sometimes it's architect uh, who wanted to win it. For instance, uh, uh, a good architect as he is, Fujimoto's Taichung Tower, and eventually became Taiwan Tower, uh, uh, was, uh, uh, was just been terminated, or actually at least put on hold uh, uh, indefinitely uh, for sure. Uh, since uh, the people have problem realizing that how could this be a tower and how do you plant trees up there uh, in the 300 and some 60 meters, so on and so forth. So uh, all these Shigeru Bang's uh, uh, museum and uh, Fujimoto's uh, Taichung Tower um, uh, put bad names uh, on com international competition. So recently, um, they have been more Taiwanese uh, uh, architects winning the project and became a sort of nationalism uh, among architects, which I, for me, it's uh, kind of sad. But then again, uh, made the best man win. That's Chris Yao there. Uh, he just, wa just won it. So um, Aaron uh, was all bitter about it. <laughs> but, uh, um, I said that it's a shame because all these patronism uh, combined with uh, what they would call critical originalism is really bad for me. Uh, I think it's bad because uh, if we keep on doing that, we wouldn't have nice project like this. Uh, right by Samung Lake, this is uh, uh, Norihiko uh, Dang, um, Norihiko Dang, uh, a uh, Yale graduate, Japanese Yale graduate, who did this incredible uh, project, uh, a uh, reception center or visitor center uh, of, uh, of Samung Lake. So I flew, I fly through uh, very quickly uh, of these projects. I only have time to uh, do this uh, very quick illustration, but I want to make a few points. Uh, first of all, um, Ito before his Metropolitan Opera House, actually have this one. It's in uh, Belgium, Ghent. And at that time already, uh, he has the concept of uh, making these two systems uh, work together. This is his proposal. And it didn't work. And, and somehow he uh, tried it again, and he won it in, uh, in Taiwan. This, for me, is one of the best projects Rem ever did. In 89, um, he has uh, three very innovative, creative projects in the year of 89. The Bibliothèque uh, being one of which, one of them, and uh, this is a conceptual model. But if you take a very close look of how these figures show themselves, 
in a neutral ground and how sometimes two of them come together. For me, it eventually became uh, the um, TPAC, Taipei Performing Arts Center. The only thing is he shrank down the grid a little bit, so the figural form came out. And according to uh, his uh, staff at that time, uh, he was obsessed with the, uh, with the Taipei Performing Arts Center, not only because uh, for him, um, it was uh, sitting right on top of the night market. On the other hand, uh, for all these projects, uh, which came out in 89, he really, really wanted to realize uh, at least one of them. And uh, this uh, became a long distant uh, relatives of those projects. So what I'm saying is to all the young students here, if you don't win it for the first time, you just keep on trying and there's something dear to you um, and it will come out. Or like this wonderful project by Neil, I'm sure he was here, he talks about this project. For me, he was my hero when I was in GSD. And uh, we look at the project he did and uh, eventually uh, I think that uh, he uh, have really achieved something uh, nice and wonderful here. Of course, he has moved on since the machine architecture age, but it's nevertheless really wonderful uh, project of uh, the gateway of uh, Kilung Harbor. And same thing with uh, Jesse. This is his uh, uh, pop music center. It uh, He did this uh, bridge building, which uh, won the first prize. Unfortunately, it did not get uh, built, and yet he kept on trying and eventually uh, the, with the Pop Music Center and then there's another one in Kaohsiung Terminal Ferry Building, a ferry terminal building in Kaohsiung. So that's, uh, that's Jesse. Uh, he has, uh, and Nanako uh, has two big projects in uh, Taiwan. And very little people know this. But this is Zaha's property that I left. This was before, just right before Hong Kong Peak, and uh, I, I, I just saw this uh, painting uh, in Tokyo. It's amazing, it's huge, and uh, you can tell back in '83 or so uh, she already has something. Um, and so I use these uh, to illustrate that uh, uh, competition. I, I, I think for a young architects is certainly a good way to test out uh, their caliber. I also want to talk about a little bit about the site. I, I'm, I said that I want to talk about building site. So I want to talk about site. One of the things that people tend to overlook is that when these projects were conceived, actually urbanism was involved. Uh, for, for instance, uh, there are three proposals when they proposed Guggenheim Museum, three uh, 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 proposals of how this can be done uh, in terms of different urbanism and you notice some of them work with the uh, street wall and so on and so forth. It was actually proposed by um, Jean Nouvel. So rather than an empty uh, 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 tabla rasa, uh, it actually um, has uh, its philosophy. And with that, uh, we invited Stan Allen to propose uh, adop adaptive reuse for Taichung Airport, and he proposed a gateway park which is, I think, beautifully done and will be implemented in the next 50 years or so. So that's uh, the project that Stan Allen did for Taichung City. And I wanted to say that these public chants, I like that term a lot because, uh, he, as you probably uh, wouldn't know, because very little people know this, in, right there in the center of Taipei, there's a lot of what I call central void, it's because it's unique uh, background, historical background, that we have all these uh, public um, industrial facility uh, scattered throughout the city. And one of which, in the mid-70s, when General Chiang Kai-shek died, became his memorial. And you wouldn't you wouldn't know, but at, the, at that time, this was actually already planned as the next uh, CBD. But because he died, and uh, he, his wife, Madame uh, Chiang Kai-shek, 
wanted to build a memo route there. So now we have uh, Taipei 101, and this is what it's like. And this was uh, what it was uh, before when it was a camp. And I am trying, to, the only reason I'm trying to say this is 40 years later, we don't build these kind of things anymore. Uh, these kind of public space, voice space, uh, in a way, it's also a keystone registering uh, what happened to Taiwan. For instance, this parcel is a Taipei Railroad Workshop, as a lot of you will remember, uh, was uh, left over from Japanese period. And uh, with that, that's why we ask and invite you, some of you, to take a look at uh, what's the alternative there. And rather than making it a memorial, just like Chiang Kai-shek, or a memorial to the past to keep everything 100% intact, we wanted to have a new urbanism. And, and because of that, uh, Taipei is a very, very um, rare example of uh, a lot of urban regeneration and, in, and chances for urban uh, interventions. And I would say, I would argue that when you wor do works in Taipei, rather than the capital A architecture or the monuments or the pyramid, as uh, uh, Tafuri would call it, uh, rather than something like this or something like this, in Taiwan we have both, <laughs> but that's not really Taiwan. Most of the people would say that Taiwan is pretty much like this. It doesn't have a form. It's not even beautiful. And, and again, this is that train depot site, railroad uh, work, uh, workshop. So again, what should we do with it? Be should we adopt something like this, or should we uh, try to come up with new one? And that's the question I am looking into now, and that's my interest. Monaco just published an issue with videos of uh, what's uh, so interesting about Taipei, I would argue that rather than the capital A building in Taipei, our building is actually a horizontal void, the nuke and cranny alleyway and these blocks. And that's where uh, the city life uh, takes place. And again, it's a formal, formless uh, architecture which makes Taipei so interesting. So again, a lot of you were there. You saw this. It's pretty amazing. And a lot of architects trying to do this. You have, he has 100 seconds to do that. And I've seen people propose uh, during that 100 second uh, uh, when uh, all the mopeds have to stop. But actually, most of the time, uh, we are a mixture of uh, the car and moped, and again, for me, monument and the uh, and the and and, and the background backdrop uh, block. So um, uh, I called it the scooter urbanism, which yeah, yeah. I show Ram this when I uh, talked in the uh, Barbican his Barbican show. I called it uh, uh, scooter urbanism. Um, and some ha something that Raim and Ito-san uh, uh, adopted into their project. And that's why I think it's, it's fun that they did. I'm going to conclude with two very quick points. Um, there has been a lot of criticism of these competitions in a negative. Uh, it was positive, and now <laughs> recently it all became negative. And I want to relate a story to you. John Utsen, uh, before he passed away, uh, Australian asked him, but surely you hate us, don't you? Chong said, no, I surely don't. It's because the culture was so young, you gave a young architect such a chance to execute his dream. So hopefully, I hope so, uh, hopefully Taiwan will keep the, uh, its uh, a juvenile mile, mind, um, and uh, hopefully that you uh, would uh, maintain that kind of uh, young mind when you practice architecture. And, and with that, I wanted to say that for me, 
architecture and cities are very interesting thing to look at. Uh, when we talk about city in Chinese character, it's about wall. You wall them people, you protect them, their property and everything. But it's also about market, exchange, exchange of ideas. And uh, so therefore, a city is a place where you feel safe, and at the same time, you reach out, you exchange idea with the Westerner, with other people, and make it global. So, uh, and, and because of that, our world uh, gets more interesting. Um, I am going to end this with my title, and uh, that title uh, uh, illustrates what architects should do. We will do our best um, to, uh, to build something for the world, and, and even with that, we stay poor, we stay in our little uh, wrecked hat, and we'll be happy. Thank you all. is different. TPAC um, has been very, it, ha it has been a very difficult project uh, all, uh, throughout all these uh, entries because the site was actually too small and, uh, and, and then again it's actually a public path from the metro station to the, uh, to the night market. So uh, uh, the second uh, place goes to uh, Tao Meng and Morphosis. And he made an incredible huge plaza, multi-layered, uh, to, to bring the people through. And so every each one of them, I think, was struggling with uh, keeping uh, the, uh, the ground level open. And, and yet, uh, again, uh, um, Rem was able to win is because uh, his project was very convincing in the sense that it has a smallest footprint and it transformed the horizontal uh, uh, experience into a vertical one even though uh, it has been done by James Sterling probably in the Stuka 
but he made an argument that valid enough uh, to take the people up. And we're in that area. You would know that that's an incredible area to be in. Uh, you will be able to see Grand Hotel, see the mountains, and see the this, the uh, the uh, Danshui River that eventually goes to Taiwan Strait. So he he make multi uh, layers of public space, if you will, and that's being his argument. So if you think about, I well at least that's my reading. Um, I, I've been arguing that it's one of the 89 project, but something different from 89 is that, uh, again, uh, uh, these 89 building is rather self-enclosed. But Casa de Musica, for instance, there's a, a ter terrace uh, on the top. Um, Seattle Library is quite self-enclosed as well. But with this one, you will be able to go out with the terrace to sort of position yourself and it makes inc uh, very interesting arguments of uh, what uh, we uh, Asian or Chinese would, would love about fiction and reality, uh, the dual thing that combined. So conceptually that works very well as well. And that's why uh, uh, that project was picked. You're, up, you're, you're, you're right, you're, you're very observant uh, in a way that uh, Ito's uh, uh, project argue a bit better. Uh, than uh, and rains, but that rain we always want to turn things around and so yeah, yeah. and 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 it's uh, more accessible for public as well than other projects. So I hope you are happy with the <laughs> answer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, just one 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 last. Um, uh, there's a recent publication, and he was comparing. Um, TPAC, Performing Arts Center, with, uh, with Beijing Opera House. And, and he made a very valid argument. I was going to actually type it out, um, but I'll probably do that later on. Um, he made an argument that how that project uh, somehow interact with the context and brought people through. And for him, that's one of the most important uh, things that he wants to achieve in his building. I'm sorry. Yes? Thanks so much for the, for the lecture. Interested in the order of the lecture? I feel like it starts with maybe we'll say monuments, major institutional buildings. The uh, uh, second, third, and fourth uh, portions move towards urban space, then ideas of wall painting, and ideas of market. So I guess it, it leads me to, to um, ask the question: Are there other, what other kinds of competitions are there in Taiwan? I'm uh, thinking housing here. That may uh, feel maybe not better, but differently with ideas of um, urban space, market, and the idea of wall. Uh, very good, actually. Um, Dean Speaks and another colleague here at the Fisher Center, uh, Andy, uh, will be able to answer this question with me. Um, in, the, uh, in the project, in the studio we did last year, the, uh, the train depot project, or it's called Taipei Railroad Workshop. Uh, we try to develop a public space rather than uh, monuments, pyramids. And uh, with moving image, the museum, the fact that we use, but at the same time try to add characters to it. Uh, because uh, within that campus, there's four monuments, and uh, we ask. What's a, what, what is a monument, historical monument? How is it going to be shown to the public? And how uh, we would not think part of it when it's preserved and all that. And I think that she did a pretty good job with that studio. And ours is not that either. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have a thick volume coming out, and I'll show you uh, how it's been up here. But that uh, is uh, in the work in the sense that. Nowadays, Taiwanese uh, uh, audience, and when I say audience, I just argue with their students. Citizens are looking at these and, and asking themselves what kind of project uh, they want. Uh, uh, because uh, if they look at uh, Shenzhen, for instance, or they look at, should I say, not, maybe not Shenzhen, but should I say that night, uh, 2008 with the uh, uh, Beijing Olympics, they ask themselves whether they really want that kind of uh, uh, buildings and monuments. They're asking themselves 
And I ask rain actually as my style when a BMI had an exchange. I put two projects together, one will be of course CCTV, and the other uh, is a uh, 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 Rothschild, a building in London. And I say I come there to, you know, two kinds of uh, rain over there. He said there was more than two way. <laughs> There's a lot of O O M A. So, uh, so uh, but I'm very happy to I uh, actually just read it a few days ago. Uh, he compared the uh, uh, key pack with Beijing on the house. I wish I had it out for me there. I'm sure I would know, do something like that. Yeah, he he really think that's uh, Cater to the context of citizens and, and, and markets, uh, and, uh, the bazaar. Okay. Uh, like <laughs> oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, thank you. Also, uh, I want to return to your last point. You mentioned that um, recently competitions kind of got a bad name, people were talking them down a bit. I think. Um, I'm guessing that quite a few of the competitions that, that you showed were invited competitions, or just uh, some may have been two stage. Um, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the culture of competitions there and open competitions. Um, but I appreciated what you said at the end that it's still a very good way for a young architect to uh, compete against other architects and get their ideas out there. Um, at the same time, I remember some of my colleagues a couple of years ago being very negative about all the work they were doing for these competitions and, and uh, going up against big offices that have right. many deeper resources. Right. So perhaps uh, the culture is a little bit different. Well, it's actually an open competition. None of these are uh, in value. And for instance, I remember talking to um, some of the famous architects. Uh, <coughs> it's, it's Taiwan, not China. Secondly, competition really costs a lot and so forth. But uh, you would be, uh, I, I myself, uh, I myself are pretty amazed with the quality of project in it. And sometimes uh, uh, they, they, they wouldn't allow us to, to really look at the need until we show us Stage. So on the first stage, we were sprinting all these uh, something 300, uh, uh, I don't know, you set them to and there's a lot of um, uh, entries, you really couldn't tell. And we will be guessing. This is sad. Oh, this is sad. Oh, this is sad. Oh, this is sad. But after, after we show this thing, there are actually some surprises as well. Um, some of the big name uh, architect jumpers actually uh, wouldn't be that way either. So it takes something to be, to be, to be there to show this thing. And it's just an exhausting job. Uh, for instance, these kind of two stage, uh, unlike the uh, Western uh, show listed just by interview, you really have to handle a lot of things, a lot of investment. And then once you get show listed, you get nervous. You don't want to change some, anything because you mm -hmm. tell yourself that's how I got show listed. You'll be also some of them guessing what other people will be doing. I and mean, if you know that, that uh, you got show listed also be Okay, this is maybe what you do. So I, it's a very, uh, it's a psychological thing, a lot of pressure, I, 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 it's a mistake as well. And very difficult, these kind of uh, competition, I would say, more difficult than anything else, to be honest. Uh, I don't envy those who can say this. But then, uh, because of, of the way it's an open competition. It's fair, and young ones have a chance. Uh, 
I could go into detail, for instance, the unfortunate uh, project of Fujimoto, how that one got picked, so and so forth. And I did not show you some of the projects that eventually did get failed and got the, uh, the, the, the mayors of the regions in trouble, as well. I didn't show those, but then again, there are a couple of those as well. So, um, it's, uh, At least I can say that in Taiwan is fair. It's very fair and very low and very, very I'm not sure I can say. Yes. Um, you were talking about the difference in um, the architecture that's going on contemporarily and um, how it's like the opera house is it just for the nobles anymore, it's for the public and even in the circulation and stuff. Um, and also trying to create public spaces. So what do you think there's a certain dynamic to the culture of Taiwan um, that makes it so these things are now wanted? Well, yes, of course. Um, when you're in Taiwan, you will notice that the park even in the morning at 5.30, uh, when it's still dark, people go there uh, exercising. I think it's uh, China the same too. Then we use these public space and street as space. The, the boundary between public and private is not so clear. So that uh, we would then tend to take advantage of public space and we love to use those space. So and that sort of brought out and still bringing out awareness of uh, the importance of these public space, for sure. And, and, and that's the reason, I think, uh, if you look at it, uh, the three uh, projects that I showed, be it the uh, uh, Banyan Plaza, Nakano, they argue about shaded space for public use, uh, rather than a, a wind lit by, uh, uh, by the uh, acoustic or uh, the performance. They all are based on public grounds. And that's something I think comes in, uh, in at least in Taiwanese projects. We, we, we went to <laughs> Occupy Parliament. My student went to Occupy Parliament and they brought out everything on the street, we use the street to protest, it sits there, and we, you know, and uh, my student built the solar decathlon house in the morning, come back to school in the afternoon, and then take their computer, go there, uh, sleep at night in the parliament house. They occupy the private sector and turn it into public to protest on uh, what they think that should be overturned. 2014 is a, a, a watershed. What was the what was the revolution you call? Oh, Kaiyanghua. But yeah, sunflower. Sunflower. Yeah, in Hong Kong it's a brother, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Well, oh, thank you.